Today is launch day for the general release of Starfield to the public, and I hope you all enjoy playing the game as much as I have in early release. As many of you know, Starfield will allow modding, just like all other games from Bethesda Game Studios, and the modding community is already in full frenzy mode with new creations for the game. But one question was at the tip of everyone's tongue, what about a script extender? Good news! The Starfield script extender is real, and the initial version is available, and it is called SFSE. This video gives a rundown of what a script extender is, how to run Starfield with a script extender, and how to install it in both Vortex and Mod Organizer. This is a very early build of the Starfield script extender, and much will change as it develops. This video will become out of date, and I will be doing updates, so, if you are seeing links on the screen to those updates, go now. Hey everyone, it's Cal from Dirty Weasel. Let's discuss the basics of the Starfield script extender. And from here on out, I'll be referring to it as SFSE. What is it and what does it do? Essentially, like any other script extender, it is a modder's resource that expands the scripting capabilities of Starfield beyond those existing in the base game or in the eventual release of the creation kit for Starfield. Mod authors use these additional scripts to create more powerful mods, but to enable those mods in your games, you need to install it in your game directory and run Starfield through the SFSE executable. Script extenders are nothing new and they exist for every game using the different evolutions of the creation engine going all the way back to Morrowind. And the team over at Silverlock.org has been providing them to the modding community since Oblivion. So they know what they're doing here. An initial warning, SFSE is intended for the Steam version of Starfield only, not the Microsoft Store or Game Pass versions. I'll touch on this later. The Starfield Script Extender, or SFSE, is available on the Nexus, or Starfield, and it is mod page number 106. Let's take a look at the mod page and see what it has to say. As we said, Starfield Script Extender is a tool for additional scripting capabilities and functionality to the game. Once installed, the game must be launched via SFSE underscore loader dot exec. Compatibility, and they mention this right here, SFSE supports the release of Starfield on Steam, other stores, Windows Store, Game Pass, etc. are not supported. And they state further on, which you don't see here, do not email asking for support. I have seen other mods on the Nexus indicating that they do support the other versions of the game, but I have questions about their stability, functionality, and availability to be updated in the future. I only trust Starfield Strip Extender through the guys over at Silverlock.org. And the creator here is Ian Patterson, who is a member of Silverlock.org and one of the key members. So this is a safe version and I will trust this going forward 100%. Over on the file page, you'll see basically one file. It states that you can either download it through your mod manager, and we will discuss that, or a manual download. Either way, I will suggest downloading it manually. Under preview file contents, you can see it has SFSE, the initial version 010, a DLL file, and an executable. They also have a text file for README and what's new. The SRC, or, or SFSE, is not needed by mod users, it is needed as a resource for mod creators. Just getting that forward, but we will discuss that when we discuss installation. So as I stated, go ahead and manually download it, and we'll go to my desktop and take a look at it. You can see here, I pulled it out of my downloads and it is in the center of my screen. I have a version of SKSE at the bottom of my screen for later reference when we discuss installation. Inside the archive, you have SFSE underscore zero underscore one underscore zero. When you open that up, you have SRC, which we discussed, SFSE 1723.dll, and the SFSE underscore loader dot exec, and the two readme files. 
The archive is available to be opened via 7-Zip, but I use WinRAR. If you are new to modding and you don't have access to those, please go ahead and get them. They are going to be essential tools when you attempt to mod things in the future. Just go ahead and take that file out of the archive and place it on your desktop for future reference. As stated by the instructions, we will need to install this directly into the Starfield main directory. And I have that open right here. You will know you're in the correct location when you see starfield.exec. If you do not have any of the file extension names behind the, the file names, go ahead and go to view and show file name extensions. If you're on Windows 10, this will look slightly different, but the essentials remain the same. Always enable file name extensions so you can see what you're looking at. As I stated, starfield.exec, this is the main directory for the game. It can be found for the Steam version on wherever you have your games loaded. In my case, it is on my G drive. Under Steam, Steam Apps, Common, Starfield. And then you know you're in the right place when you see starfield.exec. Open up the SFSE file. And there are only two things in the SFSE folder that you will need. The SFSE 17 underscore 23 dot dll and the versions that you have and later versions will have different names here but you'll know it's a dot dll file and the sfse underscore loader dot exec take both those files and just drag them over and place them into the main directory for starfield now you can see both of them right here the dll and the executable are the only two files that you need to have inside your main directory for this to work. So you can go ahead and close the SFSE folder. As stated by the instructions, you will need to run Starfield through the script extender.exec file, SFSE underscore loader, if you want the game to run using the scripts that are provided by the script extender inside your game. Let's go ahead and do that right now and start Starfield. As you can see, the game started right up, and you can see press any button to start. In the past, we used to use console commands to see what version of any script extender we may have. That has now changed. If you go to settings, you'll see at the bottom the version of the game, and in parentheses, SFSE 0.1.0. This means that the script extender for Starfield is properly installed. It is important to note here that the version of SKSE you have is directly tied to the version of Starfield that you have. For each new version of Starfield, a new version of SKSE must be built. If you have a mismatch between the two, SKSE will not work and Starfield will not launch. So each new version of Starfield, and there will be multiple in the early days of Starfield, SKSE needs to be built specifically for each version of the executable that has been released. Those are the only things that you need to install in the main directory for Starfield. We can go ahead and close that down. If you are new to modding, I always recommend a mod manager of some sort. There are currently two main versions that you can use, and it depends on your current needs. Vortex and Mod Organizer. Let's touch on Vortex first. I have a version available here, and you can see that I am managing Starfield at this current time. However, it does not automatically recognize that SFSE is available as a launch option. It needs to be updated. So if you come to your mods page, and you can see I'm using two current ones, but if you wish to launch SFSE through Vortex, you need to go to your dashboard. You can see down here in tools, you'll need to set up an executable to run the game. So when you click on the plus icon for tools, you can include the Starfield script extender. I've tested it in the past and it does work this way, but in this case, we're going to be adding new. So you can see what we're up to. We'll type in SFSE target. We'll go ahead and click on the folder icon and it will tell us where we need to go. And we're going to Steam, Steam Apps, Common, Starfield. And we'll be clicking on the SFSE underscore loader dot exec. Hit open. Command line parameters are not needed at this time. It tells the executable where it'll be starting. 
the icon for it. You can choose whichever icon you want. On start, you can see what start behavior will do. And I'm going to push hide vortex and press save. You will need to restart vortex for the next step. When you come back in, you'll be presented on what to do with SFSE. Go and set as primary. Now, when you click on start field in the upper left hand corner, to hit the run button, it will say launch. We go to our settings, and you can see SFAC was successfully launched via Vortex. In Mod Organizer, and you can see I'm using version 2.5 beta, this is an unreleased version of the Mod Organizer for Starfield, you can see that it was automatically detected as an option to run within Mod Organizer, and you need to run Mod Organizer through SFSE for the script extender to work properly. So if you want to run Starfield with the script extender installed, you need to do so through Mod Organizer, choose SFSE in the dropdown, and then run the game. And once again, going through Mod Organizer, you can see SFSE was successfully initiated. As stated, the Starfield script extender is in its initial release, and it doesn't have a lot of functions beyond being a DLL loader. If we open up the file contents again in the zip file, you can see SFSE, the .dll, and the executable. If we open up a version of SKSE for Skyrim, you're going to see a couple different things being changed. You can see an executable, a DLL, but you also have a data file. And inside the data file for SKSE, the Skyrim script extender, you'll find scripts. And inside that scripts folder, you'll find a bunch of PEX files. PEX files are the script files. So these are the additional functions that SKSE adds to Skyrim when you run Skyrim through the script extender. At this time, the Starfield script extender does not have a data file because it does not have any scripts. To use Mod Organizer as an example, if you attempted to install SFSE into the Mod Organizer mod list, you can see that it's going to give us a name and when you go to Manual, it does not have a data folder. There's nothing there. So it's not going to work correctly. There's no data file being inserted into the left pane of Mod Organizer. Let's use a version of the Skyrim Special Edition Mod Organizer to see the version changes and how it would work if you were to install it. If you double click on SKSE 64, the latest version, you'll see that it's formatted incorrectly. We need to expand that folder, right click on data, set as data directory, and then you can see the aforementioned scripts that are provided by SKSE, and then we would install it under the name SKSE. So now all those scripts that are provided by the data folder in scripts and you see them all here, would be injected into the game. Because the initial version of the Starfield Script Extender does not have those data folders containing the scripts, that's not needed, but I wanted to show it to you on how it would look in a mod manager. As of right now, there are no mods that need the Script Extender, and the Script Extender doesn't do a whole lot at this time, so it's not something you need to have installed in your game. But I wanted to show it to people and let them know that it's out there, and kind of give a basic rundown what it is. The Starfield Script Extender, SFSE. In the future, I'll be updating videos and providing them to the public for you guys to learn more as we get more information going forward. My name's Cal, I'm from Dirty Weasel, and I'm signing off.